It's good to see all of you. You look, woo. This indeed is Shiloh. This is Shiloh. May the Lord give you your breakthrough this morning. Amen. Sinimeka kwamda. Baka ninaiza kuja kuji introduce. My name is Bishop Jamie Kenny Kimani. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my pastor or savior. You might think it's a joke, but there are some here that are wondering. Na ule mzee? Ni wakutoka wapi? Ni moja wenu tu? For those that have joined us when I wasn't around, uh, I happen to be one of the pastors. And I love it. And I'm glad I am. And uh, it has started by telling me time is up. So which is a little bit scary. Because before you start and you are told time up, then you have a problem. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu wasifiweni. Muna mpenda Yesu. Mwambie jirani yako, mimi na mpenda Yesu. Na kama umeokoka, unaweza mwambie hata kuokoka, nimeokoka. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I was to come here last Sunday. Then uh, just like when you, when the Lord gives you grace of years. Uh, I say, I forgot I had another appointment. Same day. It was easier to cancel this one and go to that one and come. And uh, yesterday, I happened to, to go to a, a place that I was the main speaker, which I had not planned because my boss happened to land in Mombasa, and then he was reminded he has a meeting yesterday, so he called me. So you see, it happens. Na uko ilikuwa kali kwa program, kwa kitabu, Hata nilipewa mwavuli miadikuwa jina yake, dari miadikuwa jina yake, kikobe miadikuwa jina yake, nikabiwa si yangu. Nimpereke. Uh, in the book of Genesis, where we have been laboring on, we are, Isaac is redigging the wells of his father Abraham. And this morning as we prayed for you with Alice, we prayed for this service. And the prayer that I was praying for you is that it is 19th. It's very scary. The year is just about to end. And you have not even finished redigging. Wacha kudigi ile mpia. Redigging. Bado kuna mawe na mchanga. Unatoa na ujafikia maji. So we are praying for you that don't you worry. A thousand is like and one day, but we want the a thousand to be one day. So that in the next couple of weeks, you will discover your well and you will shout with praise of what God will have done for you. So while thinking about this day and asking myself what I want to share, I went back to Genesis and there are a few things that I'm going to share with you. I was, want to start with a scripture that I never gave the, the media, which is Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 11. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 11. It says this, To him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. The counsel is of his will. He doesn't ask opinion of others. It is the counsel of his will that you and I have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In other words, I already have it. Maybe I haven't seen it, but I already have it. What? The inheritance. And I want to talk a little bit about inheritance. 
And the story that I want to share with you is found in the book of Luke, chapter number 15, verse 11 to 32. It's a long one, and if you'll be kind, we go back to our traditional churches. Uh, the Gospels, when you're reading the Gospels and the Epistles, you stand. So that you stand and you stretch yourself and we read together uh, Luke, chapter number 15. Very many verses. We read from verse 11. We read up to verse 32. And the, so that you can be prepared, I will read all the odd numbers and you read all the even numbers. So that I will start, but you are the one who is going to end, right? All the odd I read and all the even you read. Yani, kisungu ya raisi, wale mulisoma kitabu kuwakumbusha. Kama iwezi gawa na number two, iyo wache mimi nisome. Lakini inaeza, inaeza gawa tu na ishe we usome. Amen? Then he said, a certain man had two sons. I want you to underline the word livelihood. Eh? And the younger of them, and, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Then he went and joined himself. Joined himself. Akaomba msaada. Si kazi. Joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he set him into his fields akamtuma geshagi to feed the swine. He would have enjoyed to eat it, but he was not given. I don't know whether you are reading with understanding. He would have loved. He would have gladly. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. I think we can pause there. Please sit. I realize. Amen. The energy level. Is it because it is very cold? You know, when I was coming to Shiloh this morning, I remembered the other day when I was here, we were trying to move that side so that wind can pass by. Actually, it was so hot. And then when I was coming because it was raining, I said, I church in the poor. When it is hot, break it loose. When it is cold, bring some coal. That's a good place to be. Actually, it's a place of breakthrough. The story there is a very, very powerful story. We know it. So even if I never read all of it, you know it. But in the book of Joshua, again, I never say give this to the group that is helping me, the group in, in the media, <coughs> Joshua chapter number five. 
Just relax. We are coming. Joshua chapter number five. Uh, Joshua chapter number five. Joshua should be in the New Testament after Matthew. <laughs> Very close there. Joshua chapter five, I know. Verse number two of Joshua chapter number five, the Bible says, at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make fleet knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made fleet knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gibeah. And this is why he did so. All those who had come out of Egypt, all the men of military age died in the wilderness on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. The Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died. Verse number 10. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, we were camped at Gilgal on the plan, plains of Jericho. The Israelites celebrated Passover, and the day after the Passover, the very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread, and roasted grain. The manna stopped that day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of the land. If I were you, I would say amen. amen. I would say an amen like I, I mean it. Amen. Because even if you never understood the point, the point is coming. Tell your neighbor the point is coming. The, point is coming. the Israelites had come from Egypt and they had walked in the wilderness. And the Bible records that all the military men died. All the people that are covenant with God died. The new generation that has come had no covenant with God. So God wants to put a covenant first before this team can possess the land that was their inheritance. God wanted them first to get into a covenant, not a contract. So that it is the covenant, you know, for us that are married here, we, it is that covenant that we get, not a contract of marriage. Because a contract can be broken any time. But if it is a covenant, it is until death do us part. In good times and bad times. We don't run when there are bad times. And sometimes the bad times are more than the good times. But when it is a covenant, hapo, tunakatalia pale. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But again, some of us don't understand when God says that he is going to give me an inheritance. Because the book of Ephesians where we started, the Bible says that there is an inheritance for you already. There is an inheritance for me already. I know some of us think of inheritance in terms of the land that your father's have. But some of us, our fathers have nothing. But thank God, if God says there is, there is. If God says there is an inheritance for me, there is with the land or no land. If there, and you know some of our relatives, even the land that is left to us, other relatives want it. And it is just like Isaac. Some of that land we will have to release it so that God can take us to our Reboath. Because sometimes we struggle, we lack peace and rest because of half an acre or about two acres that we are all struggling for an inheritance. So I thank God that even now here in Zimmerman, God has given me an inheritance. Though I might not see it, if it is in Zimmerman, one day it's going to come forth because God has said it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of us have nothing. Some of us, there is nothing we can say ours. Even when we go Osha, we have to visit our uncles because our father had nothing. But that does not mean I have no inheritance. God has an inheritance for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The misconception of the love of God is the one that hits us. So that sometimes we think because of where we find ourselves that God does not love me that God will not provide for me, that God does not care for me, that God has no open door for me, we, 
because of the misconception of the love of God, tell your neighbor, I don't need to do anything for God to love me. I don't have to do nothing for God to love me. God loves me because the Bible says, even when we were yet sinners, the Lord loved us. Hallelujah. You could have said another amen there because God loves you. Hallelujah. They might not love you, but God loves me. You know, we, and sometimes you think it's a joke. Even the married people here, maybe some of you were not told this morning by that permanent of viewers that they love you. Maybe they didn't. But that does not mean God does not love you. God still loves me. And it is permanent as far as God is concerned. I am loved of God and there is an inheritance for me. The love of God, if you think about the love of God, read Psalms 36 verse 5 and 6 in the message translation. Read that one. And when you read it, try to hang around a little bit as you read it. When you Na hiyo kiingereza iko. Hiyo sio mimi nimeandika. Ujue kwamba Mungu anakupenda hata kama kuna watu hawakupendi. Tusome pamoja. God's love is His loyalty. Si usome kama uko na seriousness. Turudie tena. God's love is His loyalty towards you is Eh eh bwana, eh twende twende twende. His His purpose his purpose that the purpose God has for you is titanic I know some of you you are still wondering whether God loves you I'm trying to tell you you have an inheritance because God's love you his purpose towards you titanic oh my goodness how about his verdicts towards you his verdicts oceanic I love the last part although God is almighty Although God is large, because God is, he is a great king. Nothing gets lost. Not even a man, finish with me, or a mouse that sleeps through the cracks. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would even stand and give God praise. Me nimekwambia, hi kanisa wakati tutakuwa kanisa. We will know, we will celebrate him. Because his love towards you, his purpose towards you, his verdict towards you. When I know that, I refuse to be told I am a single mother's child. I refuse to be told I am an orphan. I refuse to be told I am single. I refuse to be told that I will not make it because the love of God. You may get seated. Now, be church. Now, usikoje kuambia usimame. Ukinoki unasimama peke yako. Unapiga nduru. Na by the way, uta nitisha. Mita endelea kuhubili. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, the conception of who God is excites me. I don't know what people have said about you. And you need to cancel those words they have said by saying the love of God, what it is, the purpose of God, what it is, the loyalty of God, what it is, the verdict of God, what it is towards you. And you silence all the voices that people have. Tell your neighbor, that scripture is in the Bible. Oh, tell them like you mean it. That scripture is in the Bible. So I have inheritance, don't I? Because God loves me. And although he is mighty, hakuna kitu kinapoteaga. Na wewe, hupotei. Tell your neighbor, si potei. You know, sometimes people look at you and think, umebakia kidogo tu upotei. You need to go say, mimi, si potei. Mimi, si potei. Kwanza subiri tu. Atisijapata kazi mwaka moja. Na mwaka wapiri. Na mwaka watatu. We goja tu. Mimi si potei. Na masomo yangu. Haya potei. I'm speaking to young people here. God has an inheritance for you. Oh my goodness. Speaking to young people with inheritance. Na wegini muko thate. Na wegini muko tuedi. 
na mwingine muko below but it doesn't matter you need to know your inheritance is safe in the hands of God Maybe let me read another verse because you see somebody said that I believe what he said he said this don't become a 12 o'clock Christian Don't be that kind of a Christian who is so heavenly that he doesn't have anything to do with the earth. Don't be a 6:30 Christian still who is so heavenly to tuota tumeangalia kule chini hakaguzi bingu but I pray in the name of the Lord that I'm either going to be 6:00 12:30 12:30 so that i touch heaven and i touch the earth blessed be the name of the lord i pray that god is going to help us blessed be the name of the lord you know i'm building so that i can tell you the words that i've read from the gospel of luke psalms 105 psalms 105 verse 16 You know when you think about who God is and what God can do young people you will be so excited that you have a lot of land to conquer C105 115 sorry 115 verse number 16 hiyo unaweza weka na hata hiyo ni sawa the heavens Let's read together the heavens yes. even the heavens yes. are the lords yes. but the earth yes. he has given to the children of men yes. how many children of men are here yes. i am one of them yes. and the earth has been given to me apana karatika kulindwa na mutire eka igiri hey the, who owned, who has the title deed yes. then if the my goodness you know i told people this one man came he wanted me to pray for him and i know he might if this thing is life he watches he follows so i will repeat again his testimony he came to the office with his wife he said bishop we want to give you this title of a land then a title i say Pray for us that God will bless and release that which is theirs which is ours. Okay. By the way, hiyo hiyo land kuna siku nilienda kuitafuta pale iko. Nikaenda. 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 Hata sikuifika, nikarudi. Siku moja nitaenda kuiona. But the point that I'm bringing is this. Today because the earth is the lord the heavens the heavens are the lords so you have you go to celebrate uh, on the streets of gold but the gold is not yours actually you don't need it but the earth he has given to men siku moja siku moja mke wake ako na damu ya waingereza yes si mzungu lakini kuna damu ndani yake great great grandfather father hiyo iko na kadamu ka mzungu i say unajua kuna wengine hapa kadamu kako hata hujui 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 wakaanza kutafuta watu wa kuridhi mali yao iko Australia wakakuta ye dio next right now he's in Australia he owns lands there the earth is the lord's actually he's a friend of Susan so Susan knows that the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof meaning He owns the whole title my portion wherever it is and I tell the devil to hear today as I speak wherever my portion is 
Wherever my portion is, I pray that it will be released towards you. Let it be released towards you. In the name of the Lord. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Quickly, quickly, nimeona saa kare kakitu kameanza kufanya kazi mzuri. Remember Psalms 36, 5 to 6. In the message translation, go underline it. Go think about it. Go take a dictionary. Look at those things, those words, those misamiyati, majina makubwa makubwa. Go and, and, and read it. But where we read the gospel of Luke, there are two truths that I want to bring to you and that I think I'll, I'll get out of your way. The Bible says there was a man who had two sons. And I want to say priority is important that God is our father. Father Abraham had how many sons? Had many sons. I am one of them and so are you. So God wants us to know that there is a priority as far as uh, fatherhood is concerned. And it is good for us to know there is a blessing attached to honor. There is a blessing that is attached to honor. We just buried our general the other day. He never built a cathedral like we did. He never built plots and so on. He was in hired property even by the time he was going. But what we have is because of his prayers. So who has succeeded? Me or him? Him. Because the people who will succeed is Mwashi and others. And you are going to be a story. But in this case, the story is not here. Hii maposition yote tunaenda tukipata ni huko. Na nyinyi mkiendelea ndio mtakuwa mkinitaja. So matajo yangu bado ni dira yangu tu. Hata sijulikani. Mwambie jirani hata bishop atumuelewe. <laughs> but that man all what he did was to speak to us. And we went several times even when seated here somebody sent me something of him and I saw myself when I was big. You know there was a time I was big. Eh? When I was big there. We were taking some, help, uh, some, some blessings to him to bless us. All what he said is deliverance church. You are blessed. And that blessing we came running with it. Because there is an inheritance where we honor. Because what he carries becomes our portion. And our share in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. I know there are some people who think when they read this passage, the father gave inheritance. And I have come to change your theology and your thinking. Even those that have gone to park to study theology. I've just come to Here, there is no inheritance this guy is getting. It is the estate. And I want to say that lands, vehicles, and properties, those are not inheritance. They are part of the blessing of the inheritance. Because if the person was blessed, you had them, you have them. But if he did not have and he has blessed you, then you will have your own. I don't have to inherit Mungai's house. He didn't have one. The one my father, my mother is, is the me who built it. But you know, I have inherited Kawasukari. Why? Because Francis gave me an inheritance. Because inheritance, see Mali. So the young man is saying, Nigawie uza hii kitu, hii kashamba, nigawie kakitu kadogo. And if you follow, you will understand. And young people, may God help us. Because young people, we want it now. And if it's not, siyo sasa, tuataka sasa hivi. You know, even to the point that you want even your parents to die. Let me tell you, if they die, what you're going to have is land and houses, not an inheritance. Because inheritance is more. Joy will inherit more than the properties that I have if she walks closer to me because of the things that I carry. Me, my father blessed me with education. Today, my elder brothers and all of them know that I received a better inheritance that nobody can take it away from me. You have been educated. That one, nobody can take it away. Shamba watapigania. Na yule ya konanguvu wanaweza ichukua. But what you have been given by your parents will last forever. So listen. 
So he divided his property between them. What property? The Kaestit. Because the young man wanted something. But listen. Listen. Not long after that, the young men together. But I want, can we look at the King James? Because King James has, there is a word there. King James. Lazima unakaka, unarudi kwa King James kidogo. Napo kuna kitu nimeona, haki kutokezea vile. Hebu kitokezea vizuri. Hebu niwekea hiyo King James. Luke number 15. Luke 15, and we are looking at verse number 11, verse number 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. That is a sentence that is missing in the other, other translation. And he divided unto them what? His living. His living. Joy and Mungai comes to me and they say, Daddy, divide the estate. And as a wise father, I divide the living. The living will be the things that I have in the pocket. The things that I can do very easily with them. So he divided that. Not inheritance. The living. He gave the living. And why do I say so? Because when, when in verse number 13, if you put again in the King James, it says this verse number 13. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together. All together. All together. My, where I stand, my inheritance of Mr. Francis Mungai, may he so rest in peace from 1975, you cannot gather it in a few days. If it is inheritance, you cannot gather it in a few days. But if it is an estate or living expense, you can gather it in a few days. Two, you cannot squander inheritance in a couple of days. Because the Bible says, when he went, in a few days, what happened? He finished. He finished. Not long after, the young son got together and sent off and squandered his wealth in world living. After he had spent everything, there was severe famine in that whole country. In other words, I cannot spend my inheritance because my inheritance is not what I see. My inheritance is what my father deposited in me. It is something that is more than the things that you see with your own eyes. It is something that is more. And I pray that God can help us so that when we are asking and grumbling with our parents, we will seek the blessing. Bless me. The story of Jacob and his brother Esau. Isaac blessed both of them. He gave them something. You know, we know the birthright issue. They prayed with the birthright. And birthright is like, nani mukubwa? Nani mukubwa? So, and no wonder Yesu said, kwani ukubwa ni nini? Nipatie chakula ni shibe. Yani kikufa na ukubwa, si nakufa tu. Yani ukubwa unaisha tu. Si unaheza ishia hapa. Kwa hivyo, chukua ukubwa, kanayo, nipeka ugali ni kule mbosho. Kakakura mbosho. Kwanza ni mbosho tu. But what they received from their father are two blessings. One blessing was to for Esau. Esau was told the day you will break the yoke of your brother who took your birthright. If you break that yoke that day, the Lord will bless you. That was his inheritance. But for Jacob he was told, go, the Lord go with you. And that blessing also helped Jacob so that Laban could not so change him. I have come to speak to young people that are here to remind them and to tell them there are some inheritance that God has given us that are almost permanent in terms of when they will happen and they cannot end that quickly. It doesn't end that quickly. I also think why this, I make this conclusion is because when the son came, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to him, threw arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. But the father said to his servants, Bring the best robe, put on him a, a, a ring, 
bring the best robe upon him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on him, bring the fat and calf, and let us kill it. Let us have feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. So let us celebrate. In other words, when he went, his inheritance was still held by his father. What he had spent was his living. But what his father held was his inheritance. And I'm so sure that if God can help us pursue some of these things, our life will be awesome. Our life will be awesome. Because God has promised us every spiritual blessing. He has promised to give it to us. I say very, very quickly. The first thing that the children of Israel needed to do, which I think you also need to do, as you continue into your possession, as you continue into the redigging and possessing of those well, is that you need consecration. Before we can lay hold of things in the spiritual realm, we must dedicate ourselves to the Father of our spirit, who is the only one who can truly bless us. At Gilgal, the Lord told Joshua, to have the Israelites succumb their flesh as a sign that they belonged to God. Manna is good, but manna is boring. There are some things that I don't want now because I have matured. I was speaking to the graduates of Nairobi Pentecostal Bible College yesterday and I said, you have to get to a place you say, sitaki. Unajua hiyo? Naitoko monyoni. Hiyo. Sitaki, nataka nipewe nyama. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So these guys ate mana, mana, mana. It had bored them. But when they entered into a new covenant, this covenant was for them. The Bible says they had a Passover and mana ceased. They continue enjoying the land. There is land for you. All what you need is to concentrate yourself and move into the next level of your life. There is a blessing for you. And I say again, God has it for you because his love is awesome. His purpose is awesome. His verdict towards you is awesome. May that God come to you very, very strongly. So I consecrate myself. We circumcise our hearts through salvation as a sign and seal of our full commitment to God. So the first thing is I consecrate myself. Number two, because I want to throw it to you. Amen. Ah, ninaweza kuja. Lakini nikija kama unaniangalia unataka kuhepa kwa sababu nitakaa kwa ibada kubwa sana. Sitaki hivyo. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, for my inheritance, I have to have warfare. There are some things of yours. You have to arm yourself for it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, be ready for war. There is inheritance for me. There is provision for me. There is purity for me. There is holiness for me. There is greatness for me. But there is warfare. I have to declare war. You know, when I read about Isaac, I think Isaac was a wise man. Isaac was a wise man. When he dug the first well and there was quarrel, he gave it away because he was not strong enough. And Abimelech, they knew about it. They knew this guy, Hananguvu. So he dug another one and they caught problems also. They also knew this guy, he's not strong. But he was building an army. May God help me that whatever I have lost it is building my muscles for the kingdom. I might have lost a battle here, a battle there. Like the children of Israel, they lost to I, and they kept on losing, but God kept on giving them strength until Joshua says, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord because of his goodness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There is warfare, but if I have lost one battle, so what? I'm going to dress up for the next battle. So Isaac dug another one. Now this time, they discovered this guy is building an army. You see, when, when the Bible says, and when they dug Rehoboth, 
there was peace. I will tell you why I think this. Because soon after, the king comes with his two of his great men. To who? To Isaac. To do what? To get into a covenant. Why? Because Isaac had become stronger and stronger and stronger. Some of us have lost one battle. We have lost two battles. But may those help us to grow stronger and stronger. So by the time we get to the third well, our lives are different. Some of you are digging your air bath today. May God help you to keep on digging until you get to your Shabba, which is the sevenfold blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. There is warfare. Tell your neighbor, there is warfare. So as soon as the Israel entered the land, they faced opposition, but now God had provided for them everything they needed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many believers pray but not all pray prayers or praying things. They, but not all pray things through until they see their victories. So some of us pray, but we don't pray until we get our victories. My prayer is, if you prayed yesterday, you never got the victory, keep on pushing. Your victory is there. Finally, envision your blessing. Envision your blessing. So if... After all the tribes, they started getting their portions and get, getting their portions and getting their portions. Joshua's answer is amazing. He says, how long will you put off entering to take possession of the land with the Lord that God of your father has given you? Joshua 18.2. The war had been won, but these people were procrastinating doing the will of God. For how long? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The heavens of heaven belong to the Lord, but the earth comes, it is the inheritance of the children of men. If that is the case then, and I have consecrated myself, and I know I'm in warfare, then I'll start envisioning where God wants me to be. I'll start getting that which is mine in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My prayer is that we will know that the inheritance that God has is awesome. But right here, we are enjoying the living. But I also want to envision my going to where he went to prepare a place for me. So that when it is over and my time here on earth is done, I can get to the promised land. I want to envision that above everything else, I have a land that the Lord has gone to prepare for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, help us not to fail to understand about your love. And because of your love, that which is ours, and it is in this land, it will locate us. That which is ours, and it might not be in this land, Lord God, may it locate us still, or may we locate it in the name of the Lord. Dear Father, if it is outside here, we pray that some of those people who it's out there, that they will find the proper documentation, the visas to go there, so that they can be where their inheritance is. And dear Father, we want to give you honor and to give you praise. Lord God, we pray that as young people, we will know that above everything else, the living expenses that we have, it's not an inheritance, it's just living expenses. But our parents, they carry the inheritance that we need. They carry more than material. They carry the word of God. They carry the blessings. And they can bless us and our life can hold on the, the storms of life. I want to bless these young people that have come to worship with us today. That heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, nobody will short change their promises. Nobody will change or shall change their blessings. And dear Father, they will be great in the land. The battles they are fighting now, Father, I pray that they will come out strong. They will come out strong. They will come out strong. I don't know where you are in terms of feeling that like you are, you are not important as far as God is concerned. You feel like 
uh, you feel like you are lost in this Kogamaya. It is like you are lost in this forest. It is like you are lost in this world. It's like you, you, you feel like people have forgotten you. But I've come to say about the love of God. If you have been feeling not loved, would you stand, I pray for you. If you've been feeling there is some spirit of hate somewhere, there is some things that are not, the love is not flowing from wherever quarter it is. You feel like you are hated or something. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. If you are standing, stand. You feel they don't love you. You feel the system doesn't love you. You feel you are lost. You feel you are lost. You feel like there is no hope, that you will not add up to anything. You feel like the whole system hates you. The educational system here is not good. The last time you talked, you complained about everyone and everything, including your parents, the government that rules now, and the neighbors that are with you. You complained about everything. There is nothing good that you're seeing at the end of the tunnel. I want to pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Oh God, may Psalms 36 verse 5 and 6 be true to everyone standing. May they know that you love them. May they feel the embrace of God. May they feel that God who loves them is still in control. And what they are today has nothing to do with what they will be tomorrow because they are saved in the hands of God. I hope I'm not asking too much. But I don't want to pray for you again. But I want you to come and touch this altar and I'll tell you a little later what that means. Just come and touch this altar. Just come and agree with this altar. Just hold it and go back and sit. And as you come, Saying I'm, saying I'm loved of God. God cares for me. God has a good future for me. I'm going to become what God says I am. Because I don't depend on people, I depend on God. Just hold it and just whisper that which you have. Just whisper. The last time I was here, people came and touched this altar. Because of many things I had said, I can't even remember. But one of them, two weeks after that, they got that which they were looking for. And my prayer is that as you do so, may this altar fight that battle for you. May this altar fight that battle for you so that you can feel the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. May the love of God flow in your hearts. May the love of God saturate in your heart. May the love of God be upon you. May you sense the love of God overwhelming you so that you start saying, Jesus loves me, this I know. That can be your song from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe you're there, you're not born again and you'd like to give your life to Jesus. You're there, you're not born again. Do you want us to pray for you? As my brothers and sisters go back to seat, may I, as you go back to seat, actually as you stand here, I was just feeling as you stand here, just come back, just come back. Because we are talking about the love of God. Just, just stand, just as you stand like that. Wow. Hey, he ni ufunuwa ingine kali sana. Nimesikia. Hey, ni takuambia vile nimesikia. Amen. Larry Rudy, Rudy hapa, Rudy hapa, Rudy Amen. Hug yourself. Tell yourself, I love myself. Hug yourself. Jihag, jihem, shike vizuri. Yeah. That's, the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. You can go and see it. The Lord loves you. Amen. We wait for testimony of the great things that God is going to do among you and for you. 
in the name of the Lord.